Hello. Welcome to the fifth tutorial episode on how to make a plugin for mCreator. In this tutorial, I will explain to you how to create your own generator. The first of the tutorial will be about the generator.yaml. The second part will explain the Gradle files, the third part will explain the code files. Finally, I will give you few tips to help you with your generator. Before starting, you need to know that this is the most complicated and difficult part of the plugin system. So, if you don't really understand the plugin system, don't know mCreator, or don't know how, and where, mCreator save the files, learn them before. I can't explain everything on the generator system because it would be too long and you won't learn something. You will only copy and paste the video. Also, depending on the type of generator you want to make, you will need to adapt this guide for your usage. Finally, all of the files and folders you have to create have to be in the main folder, not the folder with the plugin.json. The folder after the plugin.json. If you want to see a generator example, you can check my fabric generator on GitHub or go inside the mCreator folder slash plugins. However, you can't redistribute the official generators. To learn how FreeMarker works, you should read the documentation on their website. Finally, I suggest you check the creator.log inside the .creator folder when something doesn't work, except for the Java code, because you will always find the FreeMarker errors inside this file. Let's start now. The main folder is the folder of the generator like the Forge 1.15.2. To be able to use your generator, you can only write Fabric, Forge, Datapack and Atten as first word. If you write another thing, mCreator won't load because it won't recognize your workspace type. The generator.yaml is the file used to set the pieces of information about the generator. This file can be very short or very long depending. For this tutorial, I will explain to you the code with my own generator, the fabric generator. First of all, you need to define the generator name displayed in the generator list. Then, you need to write what base features your generator support. You can add global underscore variables, model underscore json, model underscore java, model underscore object, and link for minecraft link. The next field is optional. Partial underscore support is used to put the warning picture for elements and features that aren't fully supported. The status field is used to define what is the status of the generator. You can use LTS, for long-term support, dev for in development, deprecated for a deprecated generator, like the Forge 1.12.2, and finally, stable for a stable generator, like Forge 1.15.2. Finally, there is the build file version. You can use at build file version in the name field to display the version of the API like 3.1.2.16 with Forge for example. If you don't use an API like Forge or Fabric, just write 1.0. We have now set up the Gradle. To disable the environment test, like for the data packs, remove the setup underscore task, run underscore client, and run underscore server lines. There are some other files to change, but we will see them later. The last line is export underscore file. This file is an auto-generated file created by mCreator, and when the user will export his modification, it will generate this file. The data pack file is in build slash export slash export dot zip. You don't need to change the name before the extension because mCreator will change it with the name file written by the user. For the setup underscore task, it's where you have to write all Gradle task you need to execute to have a working workspace. To set up the workspace like an idea, use the Eclipse task. Don't use another one like the task for IntelliJ IDEA or another program because mCreator works like Eclipse. We enter now in the complicated part of this file, if you want to change the folder configuration. If you don't need to change roots, you can skip this section. Source underscore root is the path of the .java files. Res underscore root is the path for all resources of the mod slash data pack. It contains textures, sounds, translation files, structures, custom models, etc. 
mod underscore assets underscore root is the path for all asset files. It contains files like textures, models, and sounds. Mod underscore data underscore root will be the path of all data files like the structures and the tags. You can delete the mod underscore data underscore root and the mod underscore assets underscore root without problems. However, if you delete the source underscore root and the res underscore root, in some case only for it, mCreator won't be able to export the .jar or the .zip file because it won't have access to the files. You have surely seen at workspace root and at res root. If you have read correctly you will surely know what they mean. People who didn't know, they are used to take the path of the workspace and the path of the resources. You may ask yourself where is the path for the workspace. I will answer you we can't access it and change it because it is in the mCreator side part. We will also use, later, at root for the source root and at mode assets root for the assets. For this part, I won't explain everything because there are too many things. If you want to see all of them, I suggest you to go check into a generator. The template lines are used to say where are these files into the plugin. They will be always into the templates folder, we will speak of this folder later. Name is the location of the file, s, when it will be created. So for the first, it will get the source root. Then, the package is given by the user, and finally, it will create the file with the name of the mod and elements, for example wikimodelements.java. The can lock, true says if the file can be locked or not, true equals can be locked, false equals can't be locked. This section will set up everything for the localizations. If you don't need of the localizations, you can skip this part. Format is the file extension. You shouldn't need to change it. The root folder is the root where lang files will be saved. Finally, lang file underscore name is the name that will be given to the files. At lang name will get the name of the file, for example n underscore us, fr underscore fr, da underscore da, etc. There are two different tasks, the copy underscore file and the copy underscore models. The copy underscore file, with mods, is only used to copy the mod logo. Finally, there are the copy underscore models used for custom block and item models, obj and json files. After this, you should be able to see your generator inside the list. This folder needs to be inside your main folder. It contains all Gradle files your generator needs to work. I can't explain this folder because each generator type has a different code inside their files. This folder is in the templates folder of your main folder, and it contains all basic files, the modification needs to work and to load. For the fabric generator, this folder contains the main class, the fabric.mod.json file, the file containing all information about the mod, and the pack.mcmeta. If you need other files for the sound for example, you can add them, but you need to write them inside the base templates section of the generator.yml. Otherwise, they don't be copied. Definition files are here to say where are the template code files of the element and where mCreator has to save the files. The localization keys are used to replace specific language text, almost only the name, by something of general. These localization keys are into the lang files to set text in different languages with different words. Templates files are into the templates folder, and they are these files that mCreator will generate the code for each element. Depending of the generator you make, you will have to include the procedures folder and all other folders used to generate the code for other things. You will surely have to include the mappings folder, containing the files with all mapping names of sounds, blocks, items, entities, etc. If you code a generator like the forge or fabric ones, you will surely have to get what vanilla item, vanilla block, or custom element the user has chosen. To do this, you can find a file named msatems.ftl in the util folder of each forge and fabric generators. This file is entirely written in FreeMarker, and it's used to write the good mapping for different situations. Inside this folder, you can also find other FreeMarker files, and they all help for something. You can also make your own util files if needed, 
and they won't be copied inside the workspace. However, to use them, in each file you use one, you will have to write the free marker code to include this specific file. To get more information about free marker, I re-suggest you to read their website. It's now the end of the fifth tutorial about the plugin system. You should now be able to create little generators. You will surely need a lot of time and practice to be good with them, but don't give up. I hope you liked this tutorial, and it will help you. Thanks for watching and bye.